It's a two electron system. Okay. So it's a very complicated system to solve exactly. It's like this thing. So we have just added one electron. Hydrogen atom you can solve exactly. You can figure out uh, its uh, eigen spectrum and eigen energy for that. But for this helium, when you add one more electron, so you are having this as charged nuclear charge as 2G plus 2E. And you are having two electrons. That's it. You are having one electron here. Not solve this way exactly. What we will do, so we'll see uh, how we can use the variational technique to analyze its ground state energy. Okay, you got it. Okay, so let's try the Hamiltonian of this with problem. Of this, okay. So let's try. Uh, this is the sender. Okay, so I will consider this consider this nucleus to be heavy for the time being. Okay, so we'll assume this is heavy, and we'll consider only the motion of the electrons. Let's try this as R1 and see your R2 and the distance between the two. So that's it, R1. Clear? Okay. So let's write the Hamiltonian. What Hamiltonian means? We need to write the energies of the individual electrons. Clear? So you can you are having two independent electrons here. Clear? So let's try it. What is the <coughs> so you can write the kinetic energy part of the first Hamilton. So uh okay. So it is in Ernest square one. Okay, so one minus R1. Eh? Okay. And then you can write the kinetic energy of the second electron. Okay, Nebla on uh, the Laplacian. And then you will write the potential energy of the one electron. So what is how much is that? It is general. So it is E square. Eh? So E square by R1 and the potential energy of the second electron, it is E square by R2. And there is the repulsion between two electrons, clear? So since they are negatively charged, so you gain how much is that? So okay, so what it will be? So it is actually twice E square, eh? it is the attraction. Between this E uh, and 2E, e. that's why there is 2. Huh? Okay, towards E square by R1, and what there will be? No, E square by R1. So, this is the complete Hamiltonian ignoring the nuclear motion. Huh? So, this settles our. Okay. So, this is our problem. We need to solve this. Okay? Okay, so let's assume for the time being. Okay, how to solve it? So I told you this is very complicated system to solve. Okay, you you cannot solve this very exactly because of this very factor, the repulsive uh, factor. Eh? So this is very tricky. Okay, so let's make first approximation. Clear? Okay, so let's make a first approximation. Try to understand it. Uh, I mean nature of this variable. Let's assume the interaction energy between two electrons. It, okay, let's ignore this for the time being. Okay, so let's make this kind of approximation. Okay, first approximation what we can do, ignore the interaction energy. Clear? So what I okay, so if in order to apply the variational principle, what I need to, I need a trial wave function. Clear? And I okay, so why from I can get the trial wave function for this helium? Okay, how I can choose that kind of trial wave function? Okay, got it? Okay, so first approximation what I will do, I will put, um, okay, I will ignore, let's ignore the interaction, the repulsion between electrons. Okay, so uh, there is one catch, uh, because I have put two electrons here, so although in this problem it does not appear, so I am assuming electrons here to be distinguishable so that I can label this as electron 1 and this is electron 2. Clear? So this is a catch here. Yeah? So uh, if you take the spin stress here then you need to adjust the spin wave function as well. Huh? But we are not taking into account the spin part. Huh? 
Got it? So I'm just ignoring that kind of thing. That's why I'm saying this is electron one and electron two. Clear? So this makes the distinguishing. So if I ignore the repulsion between the electrons, this will be what remains there. So I am having this kind of Hamiltonian. Okay, so I will write this Hamiltonian in this form. So it is minus h plus squared by twice m nabla one squared minus twice e squared by r one like this thing plus minus h plus squared by two m nabla two squared minus twice e squared by now what it is? So this is a hydrogen atom, is it? So it is simply the sum of two hydrogen atoms. That means two electrons are completely independent of each other. Okay. So a natural guess would be if I have to figure out the ground state, a natural guess would be what? What would be the natural guess of the wave function, the trial wave function? So you take uh, the ground state of the hydrogen-like wave function as a trial wave function. I should say. Clear? Got it? Okay. So, so let's calculate. So I will use this trial wave function, hydrogen-like. So what is our hydrogen like wave, hydrogen wave function? Okay, so for hydrogen I have. So what is for the hydrogen? The ground state wave function. Let me write psi naught to be the ground state wave function. Okay. So how is that? Anybody? Huh? So one divided by root of pi a q a naught q e raise or minus r by r naught okay got it so now if i change i have to adjust it with the hydrogen like system can you tell me what is the replacement <coughs> what is the replacement yes if i make it hydrogen like hydrogen like means so there is some central nuclear charge of z e okay so it will be z e square Z e square by R1, it will be Z e square by R2. Clear? So, sure. so what I have replaced it? This E square I have replaced by Z e. So here the Z is nuclear charge which is 2. Okay. So I will use okay for high okay. So if you are having hydrogen like, okay, so you replace by this E square gets replaced by E square Z, where Z is nuclear charge. Okay. So in case of helium, it is two, huh? but you will see it will turn. Uh, we will see <coughs> that. Um, okay, what happens? So therefore, my trial wave function. So let me write this trial wave function to be psi zero r one <coughs> r two. Okay. So let me write psi zero r one. That okay r one r two means for the two electrons oh, for these two electrons. This and this one. So it will be something okay like this thing. Psi zero a product wave function because they are what independent of each other. Eh? This this is sum of two Hamiltonians. That means wave function is independent. Eh? Okay, so you write in it in the product form. So how much is that? So I'll write it simply. So this will become anybody. So it will become z cube divided by pi a cube. Okay, so z will come here and z will come here. Okay, so it will be something. Mm. Z cube divided by pi a naught cube raised power half, okay, e raised power minus z r by r naught. Sorry, a naught. I am using a naught to be the uh, bore radius. Okay, then you are having z cube by pi a naught cube, okay, e raised power minus z. So this is r one. So z r two by Clear? So that means, okay, so this is our trial wave function. Okay, so what is our, so I am, okay, so let's calculate in this trial wave function. Okay, so let's calculate what is the energy. Huh? So what I need to do, I need to calculate only the energy of one part. Because these two are identical things, so I will calculate only this part and sum the two. 
clear? So let's do it. So for that matter, I require this integral. Okay, so let's run. Yes, any question? So let's calculate the energy. So what is the energy? So let's calculate. So the I will write the energy. It will be the energy due to electron one here, and the energy due to electron two. Put this here. Clear? Got it? Because you are having Hamiltonian as a sum of two uh, terms, independent terms, so it will be just the sum of two energies. Eh? So they are identical. So let me write this energy. So what this will be? Anybody? So what is it? Okay. So if if we look at this very wave function, let's take this part and this part individually. They are normalized. Clear? So both are normalized. So I don't need to take normalization explicitly. So let's take this e one not. So that will be simply equal to d three r. Okay. Clear? So it is d three r one then psi star r one. Then what is your h one? It's something minus i star square plus two m nabla one square minus two i c e square by r one. Okay, psi. Sorry, I should write that. Okay, you can write. Let's say. Okay, so it's hard to matter it. Yeah, because they are independent. Okay, so let's calculate this very term. Okay, so the problem is spherically symmetric. Huh? Go step by step because you need to do uh, use this spherical symmetry. Okay, so this is an integration over volume. Okay, so let me take this very part, first part. So let's take this little part, d three r one, psi star zero r one. So then you are having this minus h star square by two m. It will come out. Okay, so nabla one square psi zero r one. Okay. Okay, so then there is no angular dependence of psi zero. It does not depend on any theta and phi. So when you take this nebula, this uh, Laplacian square and spherical polar coordinates, only the radial part will contribute. Okay. So what it will be equal to? It's equal to minus h cross square by two m. So let's uh, integrate our value. So what it will be? It will be zero to infinity. Okay, d r one r one square. Then okay. Zero to pi, d theta sine of theta, and zero to two pi, d pi. It is the spherical polar coordinates. Eh? So I am using. Then you are having this very objective. Psi zero r one. So you are having this z two by a naught q raised for half e raised for minus. Okay, z r one by a naught. Clear? Then Uh, what is this in the spherical polar coordinates? This Laplacian. Okay, it is one by r square, so it is r one square, so it will be d by d r one. Okay, r one square, then d by d r r one. So it is acting on what? Okay, this wave function. Eh? So let me write this z cube by pi a naught q raised for half. Okay. E raised to the minus z r one by so that means you need to differentiate this exponential eh, twice. So you can use simply this thing. What this is? D two by d r two plus twice r one d by d r. Clear? So use that differential operator. Act it on this exponential. Eh? It is a simple differentiation. Okay. So let me calculate it. Okay, since so there is no angular dependence, this factor will give you four pi, and you take these normalization constants out. Okay, so what you get ultimately you get like this thing minus four pi. Okay, m h cross square by two m. Okay, z two by pi a naught q. Okay, so you are having this zero to infinity d r one. R one square, okay. 
Okay, so uh, differentiate it. So this R1 square you cancel with this R1 square. Okay, and then you differentiate the uh, things. You will get like minus twice Z R1 by A naught plus Z square by A naught square R1 square. And then E raised power. So these two exponentials will okay, add together like this. So Z R1 by A. Okay. So this is your integral. Just simplification, eh? Yes? Any problem? Any problem? So now, uh, these are actually the integrals. X raised power N, E raised power minus alpha X. Will it? So the gamma function is there. So let me write that integral for you people. So this is the integral you will be using. So you are having the 0 to infinity dx. Okay, x raised for n, e raised for minus alpha raised for x. So this uh, standard integral is gamma of n plus 1 divided by alpha raised for n plus 1. Feel it? So that is simply equal to n factorial divided by alpha n plus 1. Okay? So now what you are having here? Yes? No? What? Very simple integral. This is the gamma integral is this thing. So simple, you put 0 to infinity dx, x raised for n, e raised for minus x. So that is gamma of n plus 1. Okay, I have put alpha deliberately here. So you just take this alpha x to be let's say some z. So it will be 1 by alpha raised for n, 1 by alpha will come from here. So it will be this kind of integral here. Feel it? So that's why there is an alpha raised for n plus 1. Okay, so now you are hanging here r1 e raised for minus alpha r1 and you are hanging r1 square e raised for minus alpha r1. Feel it? So now use this very integral, what you will get like this thing okay, minus twice h plus square z cube by m a naught cube, okay, like this thing minus a naught by twice z. Feel it? plus a naught divided by a z multiplied by q factorial okay so just work it out so it will simply turn out to be h cross square z square divided by twice m a naught square so that is simply equal to z square let's write the a naught square in terms of its formula so that is m e raised to the power 4 divided by twice x plus square so i'm using the formula of a naught eh? That I have given you already. Okay, so this is the kinetic part of the one electron. Now let's go to the potential energy of the of this electron. Okay, for that matter, but I, what I need to do, I need to have it this very term. So I am having a E square by R one psi zero. So this is the potential energy term. So, what is that? So, it is simply E square. Now, I will put that factor, that Z part. So, it will be simply Z by pi E naught cube out. Then you are having, everybody, there is a spherical symmetry. Okay, so, let me write. So, it will be R1, then R1 square, 0 to infinity. Then you are having 0 to pi, D theta sine of theta. Then you are having 0 to by e pi it is this very integral okay and then what you are having so you are having this one by r1 so here comes e raised power uh, what you are having so e raised power minus twice z r1 by e feel it so what you get now look here so you are having r1 squared and r1 here r1 and r1 r1 goes so it is simply r1 e raised power. It is simply the gamma integral and this will yield you 4 pi. Feel it? You got it? So the value of this integral is like this thing. Minus z square e square divided by okay, a naught square. Okay? So this value is equal to it is simply equal to okay, since we are putting it in terms of uh, that electron, uh, h cross and electron 
So you use the formula K, okay? So this is equal to, okay? Minus yz squared, minus yz squared, m e raised to the fourth by two x plus two, m e raised to the fourth by two x plus two. Okay. So now what is the contribution of the energy? Okay. So the energy is the sum of the two energies. Okay. Okay. So therefore, I will write this e one naught to be equal to the sum these two terms. So how much is? So you just add the two. Okay. So, so, so you add the two. So, what is the total energy there for? Tell me, consider total energy. So, it is E one naught plus E two naught. Both are same. Right? These two are the same thing. So, it is simply twice E one naught. Okay. So, how much is that? Just add. So, it is equal to two into z square minus twice z square. Okay. M e raised to the fourth by twice. Since this is with two z square and a negative sign, that comes out only z square. Okay, so how much is this? So it is minus twice z square. Okay, m e raised to the fourth by twice x plus two, and the value of the energy is simply minus twice z square. Okay, in terms of the rate burger, because this is one rate burger. Okay, m e raised to the fourth by twice x plus square. It is one rate burger. Okay, so it is how much is one rate burger? So in terms of the hydrogen, okay. So now let's uh, write this. Okay. So the, so we have ignored actually the interaction. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, write this. How much electron volts it is? So by using this kind of approximation, I have used it. Okay. So I have not done any kind of parallel of calculation. So I have just chosen a trial wave function, and because we have ignored the repulsion, so the system looked as the hydrogen-like atom, uh, two hydrogen atoms. Uh, so we don't need to uh, do the variational calculation. We just have to calculate the exact energy. How much is that? So uh, when you use this val value, so it turns out to be minus one hundred eight. Okay, electron volts. Eight point eight. So this is very large, eh? okay. So experimentally, what is found, okay? Experiment base. So you are having experimental value. So that is roughly seventy, seventy eight point eight, probably six. Feel it? Got it? Yes, so I should put a minus sign, minus because it is. So what does this mean? Experimental value minus seventy point six. <laughs> values. So the ground state of the helium is actually minus seventeen point eight point six eV. What does that mean? It is simply the ionization energy of the helium <laughs> helium atom. So you completely ionize the helium atom. So this much of energy is required. Okay. So this is what we call the ground state energy. Eh? So for the one electron in the hydrogen atom, what is the ionization energy? Thirteen point six electron volts. Okay. So that's one rate per. Okay. So you uh, ionize the system. You require thirteen point six electron volts. Clear? Completely remove the electron. Okay. So this is how we calculate the ground state energy. Now there is quite uh, difference. Yes. It's a huge difference is there. Yeah? So this uh, okay. The first arg argument can be so we have ignored actually repulsion between the electrons. Okay. So let's take into account the repulsion between the electrons. Okay. So for that matter. I will use the variational principle because that part is, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, exactly. We don't have any kind of solution because I'm using the ground. Okay, so these hydrogen-like wave functions as the trial wave functions. Clear? Yes. Okay. So. So now we will apply. Okay. So. So let's take into account. Function and assume trial wave function as the, uh, what I have already given you. Okay, that 
Okay, so I will take uh, the z to be the variation uh, parameter. Okay, so the nuclear charge I will assume to be the variation pa parameter. Okay, so classically we can think why I need to do it. You are having two electron system. Okay, so when uh, think classically uh, for the time being. So when one electron blocks the another electron, let's say in motion. Okay, so you are having two electrons moving. One electron can block the other electron. Clear? So that means the, uh, the second electron does not see the entire charge of the nucleus. Okay, so with the motion, I mean with this dynamical effect. So the effective charge, what is seen by uh, one of the electrons is That's not seen. equal to 2E. I mean nuclear charge is that equal to 2E. Yeah? Okay, so but it can be it is it is reduced. It is some sort of screened kind of charge. Okay, got it. So that is why I will take this nuclear charge to be what as a uh, variational parameter. Clear? Got it. Okay. So what is our this wave function? So it will be simply now tell me. So it is z cube by phi a naught cube raised for one by two. Okay, e raised for minus z, then by a naught r one plus r. Clear? Got it. Okay, so now our variational parameter is z. Huh? So let's calculate uh, this thing. Okay, so let's calculate. Uh, I mean, this repulsive energy. Let me write that as an interaction energy. So how much is that? So it is equal to anybody. So it will be simply d three r one integral d three r two. Okay. Clear. So what then? Okay. Psi zero star. Okay. R one r two this z. Then e square. Okay. Divided by r one two. Then you are having psi zero r one r two and z. Clear. So this is your interaction energy. So the interaction means it is a. You see, it is like the interaction between two charge clouds, huh? two charges. Huh? Okay, uh, carrying the charge of Z e square. Uh, sorry, carrying the charge e. Okay, two particles are interacting with each other. That's why we have to put double integral. Huh? Okay. <coughs> so you take this e square out, then you take this very factor out. So you are having this Z cube by pi a naught cube. Clear? So what remains there? So you are having d three r one, d three r two, okay, and yes. So then you are having e raised to the minus z by a naught r one, okay, fill uh, it. Then yes, any problem? Okay. So it is something. Okay. Let me write. So you are having this exponential coming from here. Exponential coming from here. It is twice. So it is e raised to the minus twice z. By a naught r one, okay, yes, one by r one two e raised to the minus two i z a naught r two. Okay, simply I have added the r one factors and r two factors and nothing more than that. Okay, so in order to simplify to look it to make it simpler, okay, I look it nice uh, this kind of integral. So let's make a substitution. This substitution that is better so that we. Okay, so let me use this R one goes as. Okay, so I want to remove this uh, object here, yeah? so that it looks nice, eh? uh, instead of these uh, messy factors. Okay, so let me take this as a naught R one, and you change this R two as y z by a naught R two. Clear? So that means you are scaling the integral, nothing more than that. Eh? So mm -hmm. that means so this is simply R one, this is R two, and these will change. Yeah, how much it change? A not by twice z, huh? got it? Okay, so this integral will then turn out to be like this thing: z e square by thirty two pi square a not. Okay, integral. Let me write d three r one integral d three r two e raised for minus r one one by r one two e raised for minus r. So look here. What is this r one two? What is one divided by r one two? It's one by magnitude of r one minus r two. Okay. So when you scale the factors, okay, when you scale r one as this thing, 
So this R1 will go as twice that by A0. So you will behave a factor of twice that by A0 coming from this as well. Uh, so you are having factors coming from this thing and these will be simply exponentials. Clear? Okay, let's look th at this integral carefully. So that's why I have made a scale change here. Eh? Let's look at the integral. So if you, okay, so look at this very integral. What this means? So let's assume you are having a, okay, so let's take these electrons. So this is an exponential coming from electron one. This is an exponential coming from electron two. Okay, and there is a multiplication of this E together. So it will be E times this thing, E times this thing. Okay, uh, so what I can see, so you can say this is actually your uh, volume charge density due to electron one, Philip. So let's assume if you are having this as rho of R1, E raised power minus R1, okay? So in un units of E, so rho of R2, it is equal to minus R2. What this integral looks like? So this integral looks like this way. So you are having this dP R1, dP R2, rho of R1, okay? One by R2, rho of R2. So it is simply the interaction between what? Two charges, is it? So you are having two charge centers, so their interaction is given by this kind of uh, integral, okay? Got it. Now how to evaluate this thing? So if I, let's say, take this uh, objective, okay? So let me take this integral, d3 r1, rho of r1 by r12. Just tell me what this will give me. So what this integral will give me? Only this thing. Forget about, uh, I mean, the rest of the factors. Just integrate over this thing. So it will be dependent on R2, clear? Because you are integrating over R1. Just what it will give me? It will simply, okay. Charge density by R, what, what is that? Charge by R is what? Potential. So it will simply give me the potential due to charge one and charge two, clear? So you are having two charges here, let's say, charge 1 here and charge 2 let's say here, this is R12, okay, so uh, this integral will give me 5, so you can calculate this integral by this way, so what is the potential due to this charge, okay, that is felt by this very electron, okay, so that is this very objective, this is your potential, okay, so this is your phi of R2, this is actually the potential that is evaluated at this very point, now then you can see so this integral will simply go as d3 r2 phi of r2 and rho of r2. Is this now the interaction? This is again the interaction, clear? So it is simply the potential energy. Yeah? So th that's exactly the integral is simply the potential energy between two charge distributions, clear? So we'll use this idea to evaluate this integral. Okay? Any question? Okay, how to do it? Okay, so now let's, uh, how to do it? So I will consider a, a thin charged shell, shell, okay? So let's say you are having thin charged sh shell carrying some charge distribution. So you are having here charge distribution rho of R1 equal to E raised power minus R1, clear? So I will calculate simply now the potential due to this charge at the point R2, okay? So that means I have to consider simply a charged shell, uh, uh, because uh, these electrons are moving, let's say on a track, on this uh, spherical, um, I mean, having this spherical symmetry, you can think it's not a solid sphere, it's what? It's simply a shell, okay? Okay? So now tell me, uh, what is the charge inside this very shell? How much charge is there? So let's try that charge to be dq1. So it is rho of r1, d3, r1. Kill it? So how much is that? So since there is a spherical symmetry, you can write this as 4 pi r1 square. Okay, then this rho e raised for minus r1, then you are having dr1. Kill it? Got it? So this is the amount of charge contained in this shell. Now tell me what is the, what I need to calculate potential due to this very charge eh, at a given point. So let's say you are calculating potential due to this charge. So let's say you are having radius r. Okay, let's say at the point P here. Okay, 
Clear? So let's say this is R1. So what, how you have to calculate? There are two contributions to the potential here. Okay, so this observation point can be inside this shell or this can be outside the shell. Clear? So much sure? So therefore I can write potential due to, yes, due to charge e raised power minus r1 at point P. Okay, so how I can write that? Anybody? So it is simply dq by r. Huh? Okay, so what is that? So it will be, let me write dq1 by this r. Clear? So this I can write as simply like this. Thing. Anybody? So it will be simply, let's say if this point is inside the shell. Let's say this point is inside this very shell. What is the potential inside the shell? That is constant. Okay? Electric field inside the shell is zero, but the potential inside the shell is what? It's constant. Okay? So that, okay. So how you measure then the potential inside the shell? You will take the potential inside the shell to be same as what is potential on the shell. Okay? Okay, so what is that? So it will be 4 pi r1 square e raised for minus r1 d r1. This is charge eh? divided by what? r1. Clear? For r1 less than or less or equal to this r. While r is the radius of the shell. Eh? Okay, so this r is the radius of shell. Okay, so what is the other case? So in other case, 4 pi r1 square e raised for minus r1 dr1 divided by so it will be simply r for r uh, greater than this r simply r eh? okay because it will depend here external point it will depend on the distance got it so this r is actually greater than the radius uh, sorry so it will be r here it will be r1 huh? so Main notation check here. Okay, R is the radius of the shell, so it will be simply Q by R inside. Eh? So R1 is the distance to the point P. Clear? So this R1 is this complete distance. Eh? Okay, so that's what I can see that. Got it? So much over? Okay. So now what I need to calculate? I need to calculate now the total <coughs> potential. Eh? So let's calculate this potential. So, yes, yes. So, uh, what is the radius? Okay, so we'll take R1 to be the radius. Eh? So, we'll take R1 to be the radius. So, this will be R1. So, this is the radius. Eh? So, R1 is the radius of the shell. Clear? So, R is the moving point. Eh? So, what this will be then? Okay, R less R equal to R1 and R greater than. Keshava? Huh? So R1 is the radius. Because uh, the shell, since we are using R1 to be, uh, okay, R1 minus R2 to be, to be the distance between two electrons. R1 is the position vector of the electron. Clear? So, so, sure? so that's why I will take R1 to be the radius of the shell. Okay? So now let's calculate the potential therefore, <laughs> therefore total potential due to recharge dq1, okay, so that is electron 1, electron 1 at point R2, okay, so, clear? so how you calculate it? Tell me. So let's write at some point R. Then we'll use this R as R2. Clear? So what is that? So let's calculate the potential at this very point. Total potential. Eh? So we have calculated how much? The infinitesimal amount of the potential. Eh? Okay. So let's calculate. What that? Phi of R. Anybody? Huh? Yes. So it will be 0 to uh, R1. Eh? Clear? Then R1 to infinity. <coughs> R R1 to R. What is the potential? 
Allah is there to this problem you know. So how we calculate the potential at a given point? Once we touch. Huh? Work then. Okay, so how? That is. So it will be okay. Zero to R, then R to infinity. Because this point P is arbitrary, this can be anywhere. Got it? So R one. Then what I have to use? E three. What is? What I have to use? R. Okay. E three R one then this very value. Huh? Okay. Four pi R one square e raised power minus R integral to E three R. So it is simply the sum of this thing. So it is D R one. Okay. So like this. Four pi R one square. So one is here, one is here. So then plus this r one to infinity. This will be also so four pi r one square e raised power minus r one r d r one. Clear? So now can you integral solve? So we will use the point because we are using so it is r. Because R one is a dummy variable, na? Eh? Or it has to depend on R, eh? Okay. So we'll use to certain point R. Okay. So it can be certain point R here. So let's find the point is R one. So it has to depend on R, eh? So let's calculate this integral. <coughs> Shall I keep it as an exercise this integral? Right. So okay. So this is very simple integral. Okay. So you have to use the ga gamma functions here. So it will be simply equal to four pi. By r, okay, two minus e raised power minus r, r plus. Like this. So the value of this integral is this one. Clear? Yes. Any question? Ah, tell us. Okay. So that is the value of the integral four pi by r two minus e raised power minus r, okay, into r plus two. This r plus two is not in the exponential. It is okay. Multiplying the exponential. Got it. So this is the value of the integral. So that means this is the potential. Eh? What I need to calculate actually potential energy. Eh? So I have calculated potential due to the charge distribution. Now let me calculate the potential energy. Eh? Okay. So what is that? <coughs> okay. So let's write here for this interaction energy. Let me write this. Um, Okay, so interaction energy. So how much is that? So it is Z e square by thirty two. Okay, Z e square by thirty two, pi square a naught integral. So it will be simply d t r two. Okay, pi of r two e raised to minus r two. Clear? So we have calculated pi of r two. So what is the value of pi of r two? Okay, so it is Z e square by thirty two pi square a naught. So uh, you can write this object as four pi integral zero to infinity. Okay, uh, d r two r two square. Clear? What is your phi of r two? That is this very object here, four pi by r two. Because I'll be using now. So this is phi of r. Right? I have to use what? Phi of r two. Clear? That's why I will put four pi by r two. Okay, so it is two minus okay r two plus two this e raised power minus. So now this integral is also simple. This is simply the sum of these uh, gamma integrals. Okay, so how much it will be? So it will turn out to be like this thing z e square by twice a naught. Okay, so let me write the first will integral will give you two, second will give you one by four, another will give you minus half. 
okay so that turns out to be 5z e square by 8 a naught so it is 5z by 4 m e raised power 4 by 2h plus 4 okay so this is your energy due to the uh, interaction between these charge clouds okay so now let's calculate the total energy total energy will be the sum of the uh, the energies what we have already calculated and this energy fill in so these two energies will contribute okay because uh, we have not uh, changed the wave function wave function remains the same that's why you will put simply the sum of those energies what we have calculated okay then this thing so therefore <coughs> this energy so let me write it is as a function of z so it will be simply equal to this thing. So the first term that was what is this? So it is some term. Okay. So let me write this complete H in this size zero. Okay. H means the complete H. Eh? Okay. So how much is that? It turns out to be like twice Z square minus four Z plus 5 by 8 z okay then this factor m e raised power 4 by 2 by x h plus 10 okay 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 so now let's uh, minimize this thing and so you are in partial e by partial z so that turns out to be so let's minimize. Huh? So what you are getting? So this is equal to zero. Add some z equal to z minimum. So what you get? Twice z minimum minus four plus five by eight. That's equal to zero. So what you get? Z minimum. So that's equal to two minus five by sixteen. That is twenty seven by sixteen. So this is approximately equal to one point. What is that? One point? Some. How much is this? It is 1.7 around. It is approximately 1.7 in here. Feel it? So that means your this nuclear charge as seen by the electron is not equal to 2e. It is less than that. So it is reduced. Now let's use this minimum z here okay so therefore e of z minimum so how much is that so use this very value okay so it will turn out to be let me write this result it is it is something okay so once you use it it is minus 17.5 seven seven okay so it is equal to so what was our this 78.6 okay? and this is very close eh? so that means this repulsion between the electrons it uh, okay mm. so it corrects uh, the ground state energy to a larger extent okay so it contributes to the ground state energy okay? got it so where there is one more discre discrepancy why is this much a factor so that is uh, uh, roughly around one percent error one or two percent error. How much is that? Huh? So here, how much is error? Seventy-seven point five minus seventy-eight point six. <coughs> so it's roughly one percent error. Clear? So you can account the another effects. Let's say uh, you can take the spin into account. Okay, symmetric wave functions and uh, the anti-symmetric wave functions. Try to minimize with that. Eh? Or you can take into account the nuclear motion as well, so that you will get the correct uh, this thing. I mean, ground, uh, you will read uh, close to the ground state energy. And now you can see what I was saying yesterday that uh, this variational technique gives you the upper bound to the uh, ground state energy. So this is an upper bound to the ground state. Okay? So we will never, okay, so in only the exactly solvable problems you can read to the uh, exact exactly. ground state. You can guess because you know. Uh, it's uh, exactness, okay? but those problems which are not exactly solvable, 
okay why you don't know the exact wave function okay <coughs> so you can only have a upper bound okay so you have to minimize that upper bound clear got it oh, that's